We have been deep in these documents. Each of these are a piece of evidence that helps us put together a very important question. Who get rich in the wars? You might never hear about these two names before the war. Stinger missile and Jaffling anti-tank missiles. One Stinger missile costs around 120,000 US dollars, and the Jaffling costs around 180,000 US dollars, including the launch system and missile. And Ukraine says it needs 500 Jafflings and 500 Stingers per day. The makers of these missiles are US weapon manufacturers Raytheon and Rocket Martin. You might remember when the conflict began, the global stock market plummeted, but not for all. Lockheed Martin stock went up 20% and the Raytheon went up by 11%. But this is just one example of how these American companies have profited from war. After digging through the numbers, reports, all of it, we have established a list of some of the top people who got crazy rich off of the wars. We must car guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. This is a warning U.S. President Eisenhower sent 61 years ago. The close relationship among defense contractors, the Pentagon, and politicians has become a U.S. monster that seeks perpetual war over peaceful coexistence. These wars are big business. Let's take a look at some of the salaries of the Rockheed Martin CEOs. Here is Robert Stevens. He was CEO of Rockheed Martin from 2004 to 2013. When he first took charge of the company, he was making around 5 to 7 million a year. But in 2006, three years into the Iraq war and five years into the Afghanistan war, he brought in 18 million. When he left his post in 2013, he was given 28 million golden handshake. Yes, it's 28 million. As the wars intensify, the wallets of those in charge of MIC companies explode. Steven's successors were paid up to 34 million a year. And wars are pretty good for them. Mm -hmm. Around 90% of Lockheed Martin's revenue comes from its role as government contractor. So almost all the money it makes comes from the US taxpayers. According to study and data by Brown University of the United States, the U.S. has spent more than 14 trillion U.S. dollars since the war in Afghanistan. Half of them goes to for-profit contractors. And within them, within this money, there is a lot of corruptions and wastes. The contractors got super rich. And what about those who gave them the contracts, aka money? In the past two decades, in total, the military contractors have spent more than 2.5 billion US dollars in lobbying, which means that the contractors give the money to the politicians and to influence their decisions. Last year, Raisin donated about 15.4 million US dollars for the lobbying. The majority of these lobbyists have passed through the revolving door of jobs in Congress, the Pentagon, the National Security Council, or other agencies involved in determining the size and the scope of the annual budget for national defense. Former head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Joseph Dunford, mm -hmm. who was a major proponent of Rocket Martin's troubled F-35, joined the company's board just four months after leaving his post in the military. The revolving door swings both ways. Four of the past five U.S. Secretary of Defense have come from one of the top five arms contractors. Who else is getting rich from the war? U.S. US congressmen. Members of U.S. Congress can buy stocks in defense companies like Lockheed Martin, and a lot of them have. Wow, at least 19 congresspersons or their spouses hold stock in these companies, and it's not partisan. We've got a name list. Republican Representative John Rockford of Florida purchased between 1,000 and 1 and 
15,000 words of recent stocks on February 24 this year, the day Russia started its operation in Ukraine. Republican majority Taylor Greene bought between 1,001 and 15,000 Euroheat Martin shares two days before the conflict. And she openly traded war's big business to our leaders. Well said, Mr. Representative. There are even easier ways. U.S. Senator Gary Peters, a Democrat of Michigan who sits on the Armed Services Committee, owns up to 15,000 worth in recent stock. The Armed Services Committee authorized the Pentagon's budget in March. The committee urged President Biden to include a 5% increase in defense spending for the fiscal years 2023. In a very direct terms, he is trying to put more money into his own pocket. They got super rich, they worked hard at it, they know how American democracy really works. And for their investment, what have US taxpayers got in return in the past 20 years? 20 years of total failure and death in Afghanistan. But if the aim was not actually to free and liberate Afghanistan, but instead to pour US public's money into the pockets of US weapon makers, then mission accomplished. The same thing is happening in Ukraine. The US does not want peace in Ukraine, it wants prolonged conflicts and profit. 